is up YouTube? It's RS Mario here bringing you another uh, another almost said Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. Mm. Uh, <laughs> another Overwatch 2 video. All right. So, uh, of course, we are in the Poke News drought. I do have a couple Pokemon videos this week though. But while we're in the news drought, let's talk about Overwatch, the newest vertical for the channel. So, it's patch day. Uh, the new season starts tomorrow on the 16th. So uh, they gave us the patch notes, all the new changes, the new mode uh, trial that we're supposed to be getting, all that stuff. They gave us information on it. We're going to go through it. Now, I will admit, uh, you do see the limited time trial thing right here. Uh, now, I have kind of a lot to say with this. So I might want to break this off into a separate video. So, you know, if you don't see this in the video, you know what happened. All right. You know, if it skips straight to the other stuff, because there's a lot to stuff, a lot to talk about here, and I don't want this video to be too long. So, of course, if you want to continue getting videos like this for me, or my anime videos, or uh, my Pokemon videos, which you can check out my Mega Evolution video, by the way, uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, do all that good stuff that YouTube requires you to do to continue getting videos from me. Follow me on twittercom slash mario 128 like my video tweet, share my video tweet, and I will shout you out at this portion of the video. Let's do it. So, um, Overwatch 2 retail patch notes for September, uh, October. Wow, where am I? <laughs> uh, April 16th, 2024. Hero updates. All right, here we go. Good stuff. All right, we're only 30 minutes into the video. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to cut this up into pieces. Okay, so hero updates. New hero venture. Venture has been added to the lineup. Immediately playable. Oh, wait a minute. Venture is immediately available to play in competitive. Oh no. <laughs> no. See why y'all why y'all why y'all had to do this. Okay. We the whole point of having venture not be available in competitive is so people can learn the hero before you put them in competitive now you're gonna have everybody trying to be try oh i need to i need to play the new hero i need to learn the new hero in competitive oh lord game quality about to go down a little bit you are guaranteed to have one garbage dps if they don't know how to play this hero oh boy all right you better look you better learn life weaver all right so you're gonna have to snatch this man out of, of bootleg places when they're learning how to play venture that's that's basically what's gonna have to happen you know, i don't like it tanks doomfist rocket punch all right so the empower punch is no longer consumed when the wind up is canceled by using seismic slam or power block so hmm okay so basically if say you have an empower punch and then you wind up, but you cancel, and then you go for a seismic slam or you go for another power block or whatever, you don't lose that empower punch. So the empower punch is something that you can hold on to, kind of like like uh, Sojourn's rail. So if you got a Sojourn rail, you can kind of hold it until you want to use it. You know, okay. Uh, Junker Queen, see Carnage, uh, impact damage increase from 90 from 90 to 105 which that's kind of a big leap Joker queen out here smacking people reinhardt all right earth shatter knockdown duration increased from 2.75 to three seconds i mean why not just go to full four seconds i mean it's a alt it's not like a it's not like a sleep dart which is on a cooldown. it's it's an ultimate you know what i'm saying like but okay, it, 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 anything helps. Anything helps. Um, see, shockwave range increased from 20 meters to 25 meters, which that's not bad. An additional five meters, it's not too bad. That way you can catch some people that's back there. You know what I'm saying? But that's all we got for Reinhardt. So I expected a little bit more, but any, any little bit will help. Any little bit helping my boy is fine. So, uh, Sigma experimental barrier movement increased from 16.5 to 20 meters per second. Uh, developer comments, this change will improve Sigma's ability to protect allies that are further away from him. So, this just changes the movement speed, which 
is good, but the main thing that's wrong with Sigma right now is that there is a one second cooldown from when you use your shield to when you pull it back. So when you cast it and then you pull it back, you can't do it again for one second. So you can't flash your shield like a Reinhardt. Like, no, you can flash it and pull it back and you have to wait a second or a sec 1.5 seconds, which it could be bad. Like if you got the shield placed and then they throw a diva bomb and then you pull it back, you can't immediately cast it to block off the diva bomb. So you just die. You don't know how many times I've died and my team has died because I forgot the stupid cooldown. <laughs> like this, this is good. But uh, getting rid of that cool now will be better, you know. Uh, Wrecking Ball. So this is the Wrecking Ball rework. All right, so this is what they've been talking about. Uh, they talked a little bit about this in the developer update, but I didn't cover that because I was doing other stuff. Um, so Wrecking Ball's Grappling Claw. Hold the jump input while the Grappling Claw, claw is attached to the terrain. To retract it, Pulling yourself upwards to the anchor point, this action can rebound, can be rebound in the hero sec settings. Uh, now has a one second cooldown if Wrecking Ball never reaches the ramming speed before canceling the ability. Interrupting him with hack, hinder, and stuns will trigger the full cooldown. So, wait, so if he uses the hook but he doesn't get to ramming speed. He just gets it back a second later. Okay. All right. That's kind of lit. I ain't even gonna lie. That's kind of lit. That's going to make him a little bit more mobile. Um, but okay. All right. But it, it makes him more mobile, but it doesn't make him so mobile that he's annoying. All right. Because messing with balls, mobility can be a very bad thing for anybody playing against a ball player, trying to catch him. You know what I'm saying? If he's like rolling, no, that's, that's going to suck. But this, this doesn't necessarily do that, at least in my opinion, anyway. Uh, the maximum duration time no longer triggers unless he reaches ramming speed. Okay. So if he doesn't reach ramming speed, it's only one second. If he reaches ramming speed, I think it's like four. Uh, it's been a long time since I played ball because... In, in, in my rank down here in the basement with the metal rank mofos, ball is kind of trash. <laughs> um, Adoptive shield can now be reactivated to redistribute 300 over health to, to nearby allies, capping at 75 per person. Enemy and ally detection radius increased from 10 to 13 meters. So this right here is the problem. This can be a real problem because... Most of the time you see people play ball is in dive competitions, dive comps. So like in the high ranks, like the, 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 the comp was like ball tracer Sombra, you know, with like maybe a Kiriko in there too. You know, maybe that was Genji. If you wanted to switch up and do a different DPS, basically dive comps. All right. You pick out a target, the ball runs in, Smashes down on the target, boops them up in the air, somber hack, tracer comes in the one clip, something crazy like that happens, somebody dies. Uh, but with active with, with the new adaptive shield, not only can you protect yourself, but anybody you're diving with. So imagine having to deal with ball diving in with an adapted shield protected tracer and a, an adapted shield protected Kiriko healing them oh gosh ball dive is gonna be so busted now oh man i'm so glad i'm so glad to be lame this is one of those moments where being lame and being in the metal ranks is good because people don't really play ball down here <laughs> wow um minefield uh health increased from 50 to 60 so basically it makes it harder to kill which okay the general goals here are to add a direct way for Wrecking Ball to support his allies aside from purely team disruption, make the hero more approachable while adding more avenues for skill expression, and improve the quality of life around the grapple. 
They kind of did that, but I got a feeling that this is going to be busted right here. This adaptive shield thing, it's going to be busted. All right. Tracer is already annoying enough as it is with, with the HP buff. Giving her an additional 75 health, depending on how many people are around, that's going to be busted. Not, and not to mention, uh, freaking Venture's in the game now. So Venture probably can work as a dive hero since he works a lot like you know, subterranean doom fist. So, all right. Um, let's see. So yeah, hold on. Just th just thinking about that. Every time venture uses one of their abilities, they get shield health anyway. So venture can have shield health, freaking adaptive shield health. Oh man. Yeah. They're going to they probably nerf this. They're going to change this eventually. Uh, Sombra, uh, let's see, virus, total damage over time decreased from 100 to 90. Yeah, I get this. They mainly did this because they realized that giving virus impact damage and damage over time made the counterplay a lot more difficult, especially if you're hacked. So if, like, Sombra EMPs and then smack somebody with the virus, they're pretty much gonna die. Pretty much. Um, Tracer, recall, cooldown increased from 12 to 13 seconds. So I figured this. So in the, in the, 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 the little developer video thing, they said that they were going to mess with Tracer's uh, uh, movement abilities, right? Or her abilities in some way. They were going to nerf her. And so this is the perfect way to do it. So she can't blink as often. All right. Okay. Um, now if they did the regular blinks like this and added a little bit more time to the regular blinks, I think this will work too, you know, but, uh, I don't think they want to ruin her because, you know, pulse bomb, let's see, base projectile decreased from 0 0.2 to 0 0.1 meters. Uh, the total projectile size is now 0 0.25 meters. I'm not going to go through how that fits into the season nine changes because I don't feel like doing that much math in my head right now. I'm just going to be honest. Um, there is now more downtime to Tracer can safely re-engage after driving her away. Pulse Bomb will require more precision. So, I mean, Pulse Bomb was already hard to hit anyway, but I guess with the new, the new hitbox changes and all the other kind of stuff, that's probably what it was. Uh, Venture. So, Drill Dash. Impact damage decreased from... Oh, wow. They already nerfed him? They already nerfed him? That's crazy. Uh, impact damage decreased from 60 to 40. So, this is for the regular dash. Because he's they, he's they he's got two. So, he's got the regular dash. And then he's got, like, the one where you go underground and you move around and you pop up. So... Clobber damage, uh, uh, impact damage increased from 40 to 30. So Clobber is their melee. Because the melee that uh, he's got is like a drill melee. So it's like... It damages over time. So they nerfed that. And they nerfed the damage over time too. So okay. So overall, just does less damage. And the tectonic shock knockback is reduced by 30%. We are redistributing the damage on some of their abilities so that positioning relative to the enemy and tracking the target is more important than dealing maximum damage. Okay. Um, I think this will hurt them uh, mainly because, I mean, you, you need to get those kills quickly in order to justify being back there. Uh, but, okay. All right. Um... Now, you're going to have to hit more of your abilities in order to get that, that kill that you need to get. That's basically what's happening here. So, support. Ilari, her solar rifle primary fire recovery increased from 0 0.2 to 0 0.25 seconds. So, I guess it, increases, it recovers faster. Okay. Secondary fire heal per second increased from... 105 to 115. They're really trying to get people to play Alari <laughs> because they realize now with the 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 added because see Alari was always kind of like the DPS hero support. All right, you know what I'm saying? Because she does healing, 
but her healing is mainly done by the pylon. All right. And so you just throw pylon somewhere and then you go and hold a position like a regular DPS. All right. Now that there's more HP in the game, all right, you can't really do that because they didn't buff her damage. So you can't get them same kills as you was getting before. So your, your, your usefulness is reduced a little bit. So they're trying to get people to use Alari. Let's see. Lucio Sonic Amplifier damage per projectile decreased from 18, from 20 to 18. Okay. Sound wave damage increased from 35 to 45. Why are we giving Lucio things? All right. Lucio players don't need nice things. Okay. Nobody likes Lucio players. Okay. All right. I'm just saying nobody likes Lucio players. Nobody likes that boop that knocks you three miles away now. All right. No, nobody likes that. Okay. Why are we giving, why are we give? there's no reason the sound waves should do damage anyway. And now it does more damage. Why? Life Weaver rejuvenating dash heal increase from 50 to 60. Oh, this is gross. No, this is so if you play like I play a lot of dive heroes, right? I play a lot of well, when I'm playing DPS anyway, I play a lot of Sombra. You know what I'm saying? I like to get in and get behind. Oh, pause. The one of the hardest things to kill is a Life Weaver because Life Weaver can reposition itself, he's got pedal. The dash, giving the dash more healing sucks. But I guess they did this because they added a new dive character to the game. Not to mention Ball got a rework. So dive is back now. So they needed to add all the heroes that are probably going to get dove. They need to buff those heroes. Uh, let's see. Tree of Life, Pulse Healing increased from 75 to 90. Woo. Okay. Moira Bionic Grass damage increased from 65 to 60. Uh-oh. Moira nerfs. Uh-oh. They nerfing the DPS Moiras. Coalescence self-heal increased from uh, 50 to 55. So, um, I think this is a good thing, honestly. Uh, I, I've been working on a video of top, well, it used to be 10. I think it's going to be 8 now since they've already fixed some things. Top eight things they could do to fix Overwatch. And I do have a section in there about Moira. So that's going to be pretty interesting. But uh, I think this is pretty good. I think this is pretty good. Because DPS Moira is annoying. Okay. I, like It almost makes me hate to see D Moira players on my team. Because I almost like, almost 70% of the time feel like they're going to be DPSing. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. Um, Let's see. Bug fixes. Wait a minute, this this was a thing? The Junkrat tire was receiving? Yo, that's wild. That's wild. I mean, so the, the Junkrat tire was receiving the healing passive that everybody gets. <laughs> I mean, but how would you even be able to get the Rip tire somewhere for five seconds for it to trigger? Like, I mean, I don't even think Rip tire lasts that long, but okay. Uh, let's see. Fix the bug where some untargetable heroes can be healed by the tree of life. Well, if you can't target them. So I'm guessing like, I'm guessing it had to be Venture. So you can't heal Venture if Venture's underground? Interesting. All right. Um, oh, wow. Good Lord. <laughs> I'm not going to read this wall of text. You, if you want to read it, it's right here. Hold on. Let me make sure you can see it. If you want to read it, it's right here. Uh, that's about it. Uh, tell me what you think of Season 10. To me, it seems pretty interesting. I'm, I'm going to be playing Clash. All right. I might be streaming. You never know. Like, comment, subscribe. And as always, people.